In this video, I will explain about how Ansible Tower AWX version is used in one of our environment. So about me, myself Kadrupel, working as a principal engineer at Dell Technologies. I specialize on DevOps, cloud and automation tools. I have developed several automations for our clients. Here is a quick overview of what we will be covering in the session today. We will discuss the benefits of having Ansible Tower in the environment. We will show dynamic inventory management using GitLab as source code manager along with some real life use cases. Let us quickly go through some of the benefits that we enjoyed by adopting Ansible Tower in our environment. Ansible Tower provides a graphical dashboard which gives us the high level overview of everything that happens in our automation space. The greatest benefit of having Ansible Tower is the GUI based execution of automations even for the complex tasks. A centralized way of scheduling various automations and planned activities. We can easily enable or disable the automations by toggling on or off buttons. Accessing the reports became easy. We are now able to quickly view the events and output data in real time. Role based access control mechanism helps us to control who can use what automation and where the teams can deploy their automations. In short, the Ansible Tower is a remarkably useful add-on to Ansible Engine. We have three different categories of systems running in our environment, development servers, pre-production and production systems. We have thousands of servers running under each environment and when it comes to automation, it is always difficult to track or define the static inventory because the servers are spinning up and shutting down rapidly in response to the business needs. The static inventory solution may not be appropriate for our requirements, especially when it comes to OS and server related automation. So we are using GitLab SCM to store the host information, which is integrated with the Ansible Tower. In the upcoming slides, we'll take a detailed look at how the GitLab SCM inventory is configured and managed. Before we jump into the live demo, let us go through the automation workflow at a high level. The developer or the automation team develops a code. They push it to the GitLab CI and make it available for the team's use. Automation team goes to the Ansible Tower, review the requirement, create a template, map it to the GitLab SEM, create the project and inventories. They further go ahead and enable the access to the ops team who can utilize the automations based on the customer request. In the next slide, I'll demonstrate how the operations team further uses the existing inventories, repositories and host file to manage the dynamic inventory according to the automation requirements. So time for a live demo. Let us take a look at Ansible Tower inventory which is connected to GitLab SCM for maintaining the dynamically changing inventory list. So here in our inventory, we have four servers added currently. So here is the repository and script files stored in the GitLab. I'll go ahead and update the host as file for changing our inventory in the Ansible Tower. I'll use the edit option to change the file here, but as you may be aware, you can use various IDEs or web IDE to change the host file, which is more convenient than the CLI options. I'll add few more entries here. Okay. So currently we have added two new entries. I'll proceed to commit the changes. All right. The file has been updated now. So we should be able to pull the information here by syncing the project. So this is the project associated with the GitLab instance as well as the current automation inventory. And you can create a number of projects and link to your required inventories for various automations. Let's wait for the sync to be completed. All right. So the sync and inventory update are completed now. We should be able to see the host 
list with the newly added servers. There we go. We have the servers reflecting in our inventory now. So this is how we manage the dynamic inventories for various automations and projects. Here in this use case, we'll take a look at one of the critical automation, which is Wintel based. So this automation helps us to extend the drives on Windows virtual machines. This automation will be executed against Windows based virtual machines. The initial set of tasks gather the information about OS drives. It sets the facts. It further goes to the VMware layer and gather the information about the disks allocated. It will then map both the details from OS and virtual layer in order to set the new disk capacity according to the requirement. Since our requirements are dynamic, we gather the disk capacity size using Tower's survey option. The next set of tasks will take care of the OS activities post extending the virtual layer. It rescans the devices and then grow the partitions. The tedious part here is to map the device information from the OS and VMDK in the virtual layer. This automation helps us to achieve it quickly and end-to-end -end process is automated. In the next slide, we will take a look at how the implementation works. Let's say we need to increase the space of D drive from 52 GB to 100 GB. And currently the disk 2 is associated with the D drive in the OS. So let's take a look at the virtual layer. This is the virtual hardware information. So we have total three disks allocated to this VM, hard disk 1 with 150 gig and hard disk 2 with 55 gig, which is unallocated in the OS or very loosely allocated. Hard disk 3 with 52 GB, right? So our target disk would be hard disk 3 for increasing the D drive space. So we have defined our requirement to increase the D drive space to 100 GB. This will be achieved by a predefined template which is stored in the Ansible tower. We are using survey option to gather the dynamically changing variables for this playbook. And here in our case, the desired size of the D drive would be 100 GB. And uh, here are some of the other informations to log into the vCenter, vCenter name, vCenter username and password. So once we have entered the variables, uh, this is the preview before we launch the template. After reviewing the preview, we should be ready to launch this template. So the template execution has been completed successfully. And uh, here is the overview about the implementation. So th th there are total one play and 12 different tasks involved in this template for one host and it was completed in about 50, 50 seconds. Let's quickly validate the status inside the OS after the template completion. So here we could see that disk 2 which is mapped to D drive is currently 100 GB of size which means without any manual intervention the disk size has been increased to the desired size. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this demo. 